Right, well, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm in the A2. I'm wearing a shirt, so it must be a weekday. And it is, I'm just commuting to work, and I thought now's a good time to uh, film the intro and outro to a video that I wasn't really gonna release anyway. So this is gonna be a bit odd, because I'm doing an intro and an outro on my way to work, because I didn't film one uh, at the weekend. Uh, basically, I filmed a footage of me just doing other stuff to the car um, and a little trip to a couple of scrap yards. I think I only filmed one of the trips, but um, third. Um, yeah, I just thought, actually, I'm going to put this together and make a little video because uh, it's quite a relaxing watch, maybe. I apologise for the vibration on the camera, by the way. It's just this is a three-cylinder diesel on a phone mount, so hey-ho. But yeah, in this video, I uh, I started cleaning the car interior. I gave it a really good hoover, especially the boot uh, and under the seats and stuff. And I also wiped down all of the surfaces in here. And then I started trying to tidy up some of the other interior bits as well. Um, and that's when I made some more discoveries of issues with this car, shady history stuff, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, I sat that way for like half an hour, you dumb fuck. That is not the whole for coffee. And yeah, at the end of the video, I'm sort of going to summarise the issues with this car. What I'm going to do going forward, uh, it's becoming a very expensive car very quickly. I was definitely sold a wrong one. Uh, but I have options, I have options. Maybe you maybe you already know what I should do with this car. Definitely comment below and let me know. So yeah, enjoy the random assortment of weekend activities that I did in and around cars and I'll uh, come back to you with an outro in a bit. Peace.
Just thought I'd film a quick, a quick video. I'm in a scrapyard, right? It's a scrap car, all right. Now, I needed a couple of bits for the A2. There's two things I needed. One was a radio of the correct era. Um, so I still wanted the concert because that's the better sound and a few extra extras and you can plug a CD changer into it or a Bluetooth adapter. And I also was looking for a B5A4 a climate control system because the buttons on there are interchangeable with mine and mine are knackered. Uh, first A4 I've come across, not only does it have the right radio, but has a climate control system in it. What are the chances? I mean, I've literally walked down about five cars, this A4 estate's here, and it's got oh, everything I want in it. I'm still gonna walk around, but yeah, just thought I'd uh, add that in as a bit of a, a little bit of thing. I might film some around here if, if no one is watching, because I don't think they'd like that, but you know, it's quite, it's always fun doing a little trip in a scrappy, innit? But yeah, I've got a few things to carry now, which makes it more fun. Got a sport there, so I'm rowing. There's a couple of old Audis over there, it's quite cool. Yeah. Oh dear. She's not looking very happy, this one, is she? Beamer motor. Something you can hear. Oh, she's been plundered well. Uh, just a uh, HSC or whatever. Some crackers there. Very nice. Very nice. I think if I find a parcel shelf, I'll be the luckiest person in the world, to be honest. But it doesn't look like it, does it? Just found another Revan with another concert radio. I mean, that's also got a screen issue. And again, this is the one I've got. No, I don't know whether to have it or not. I'll have a think, I'll have a think. Another nice Spectre van. And of course, I don't want the van actually, it's a saloon. And look, it's got a concert now, it looks muddy as fuck. But I'm thinking the actual fascia on it's all right, as in the LED. So as I have mentioned several times before, there's some very ugly things going on over here with switches being warmed, warmed out. Warmed out? Or down. Same up here. That one's spectacularly buggered, isn't it? Issue with this one. So this one is a... A2 specific part, which is really annoying. Um, luckily, the radio isn't as such, because uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video, this is a CAN bus radio and this isn't a CAN bus car, so it will just turn on and turn off as it mm. wants. It won't turn off with the uh, with the key, which is a tad annoying, and I kind of want, you know, some originality. And then we have these buttons that are worn to hell. Problem is, they have this soft touch crap and... Uh, on Audis, it seems that they wear through. However, there's, a, there's there's options. You can put stickers on these, you can, all that kind of stuff. However, however, you can just get a B5A4 aircon control unit, climate control unit, because from what I can work out, they don't use the soft touch. Obviously, it's a different size, but the buttons are exactly the same, so you can pull that out, take the faceplate off, swap the buttons out and everything like that. Radio. Um, I had a look online, turns out I need, this is a Audi Concert 2, um, I need an Audi Concert 1. So here's the three I bought, <laughs> in the hope that one works, they were a tenner each. Um, yeah, they all, they, so one of them, this one has the code and the manual with it, but it's got the display a bit wank. It does have a, uh, tape in there as well, I wonder what that is. Um, that one's got a similar problem with the screen. This one has a nice screen, but it was in a very damp car, so I'm not, I'm kind of not sure. And obviously these two will need the code, which you can get online, but you usually have to pay for, which I'm not keen on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean all this up, the scrapyard stuff, and start tearing into this, seeing how we do. I'm glad I brought them back and bought more. This one just says telephone. I've put the code in. And uh, I can't do anything. I can't change the mode. I can't put Dolby or phone on. Oh. Hmm. 
Well, that's very German. Very fond. Also sounds a bit German. So. Okay, back to the drawing board. Still stuck in that driver jam. So, you'd have seen that uh, I did a little trip to the Scrappy. Um, first trip I didn't film actually. In the first trip I got this steering wheel, which is from a TT. It's way nicer to hold and it looks nicer as well and it fits perfectly and it's an easy swap. Um, I still have the entire steering column in the back if anyone wants that. Yeah, and then I started uh, mucking around with the buttons. I've managed to replace some of the air, uh, air climate control buttons. The other ones are a bit more of a pain. I'm going to save them for another day. I do have them ready to go though. So let's start with the first problem that sort of uh, you saw at the end of that video. <clears throat> no matter what radio I plugged in, it didn't really like my system than I was kind of expected. So just to recap on the stereo I have in the car right now, which is the one that came with it when I bought it. It's an Audi Concert 2, which is the later CAN bus model. It doesn't illuminate at night and it doesn't switch off when you turn the key off, which would point to the fact this is a non CAN bus car. It is the number one, you know, oh, that's why it's because it's in a non canvas car. Someone's upgraded to a later CD player and uh, they haven't fitted a canvas full or a canvas defeat device or whatever you want to call it, an adapter, <clears throat> which then just tells the thing to off and on. I was convinced this and so was most of the owners club actually. Um, and something wasn't adding up. Like when I plugged the things, the, the other stereos in, there was bits in there that was a bit weird. <laughs> Specifically, the wiring looked like it was a CAN bus system, like a later one. So I ended up paying for a little bit of time on the Audi, uh, I can't remember the name of the system now, I've used it before, Audi's own system that you can pay for and you can go in and download it to workshop manuals and stuff. But while I was there, I downloaded the full spec sheet of the car, not just the one it shows you on the sticker, and it does say it comes with a concert. And it also says <laughs> this car came with DIS, D-I-S, Driver Information System, I think. Um, I think in the first video I, saw, I said, you know, I, I don't know my MPG because this display is the non, the standard display. It's not the optioned uh, driver information system. So it doesn't tell me MPG, it just tells me that it's currently 10 degrees. Um, and the, the DIS units are actually quite sought after. And there's a good couple of people on the forums who code them in and stuff. So the options list said it should have DIS which it doesn't, so someone's nicked that. And I do have the stalk for this. I didn't realize that they did different stalks, but yeah, mine's got a reset and a button for switching between the two. And I'd already been looking into this. It's about 350 quid to retrofit with the unit and everything. Sorry. So anyway, I got to talking to the guy, the expert on the forum, and yeah, he, he confirmed, he goes, what's happened there is someone's taken the disc unit out for whatever reason, I won't say foul play, and although they've recoded it to work with my keys and therefore the mileage is correct and all that stuff, they haven't wired it properly to send the CAN bus signal or it's a pre CAN bus cluster. So the radio doesn't know when to switch off and on. So the issue isn't actually the radio, it's my instrument cluster. Um, but yeah, it's just another one of those things. It's like, oh, this car just keeps coming up with really bad surprises. Now, I'm not going to say it was the guy I bought it off who you know, swaps it for a cheaper cluster. Um, but he does have a lot of A2s and he buys and sells them. So I wouldn't put it past him. Um, I mean, after all, you know, he was convinced that the gearbox just needed a uh, adjustment. Um, that I should have, I should have known. Anyway, so there's that. And then, yeah, let's get onto the gearbox, shall we? Third crunch is when it's warm now as well. It's not very happy. I just have to ram it in. Uh, it's drivable. It's just annoying. It's very annoying on down change because obviously down change is, is much worse. Um, so yeah, I'm going to need a new gearbox. And then I got down the rabbit hole of gearboxes, right? The gearbox that comes with this thing is super rare. And for good reasoning, it's, it's they just break. They're, they've got a weak third gear synchro. And to be honest, the gear ratios are a bit odd. It's fifth when you're doing 70 mile an hour you're doing nearly 3000 rpm and this thing only revs to four and a half so it's quite a bit it's quite revvy so a lot of people either fit a sixth gear a longer fifth gear to the original box or you can fit the gearbox that vag used in the polo blue motion i think a seat ibiza and a, and a fabia like those that that's down there you go um basically the, the little uh, eco 
eco cars that used versions of this engine. Um, and its code is JDD. It's an O2J, JDD. Uh, the three letters tell you what, basically what um, gear ratios it's got. So JDD is the one I want, I do it. But then <laughs> when you go down that rabbit hole, you obviously end up getting a clutch. That's another 50, 60 quid for the clutch kit for that car or this car. Um, yeah, it just gets so expensive. And then, me being me, instead of doing the stuff that needs doing that I really don't want to spend money on, um, I'm getting it remounted. <laughs> uh, I have a reason though. I've been told that with that JDD box, with those ratios, you really want uh, a map. And I'm also getting the GR uh, modified. Not removed, modified. So this should go from 75 to about 100 horsepower, but apparently it with the EGR and everything, it gives you such good low down torque that you, you barely notice that you've got higher ratios until obviously you're on the motorway and it's much quieter. So the car should become more economical, even if it's costing me a metric ton of money at the moment. So let's not forget, if I give it a bit of power, it'll go in. Let's not forget that uh, I've already paid over 250, 300 quid to try and fix the gearbox. And now I'm just buying another one, which has the updated shifter. It has the, um, I forgot to say it also has, a, 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 if you get the JDD, if you get the JDD, it also has a stronger third gear synchro. So there's lots of things that point towards getting the JDD box. But yeah, what do I do guys? What do I do? I'm getting the thing bloody remapped when it's got a broken gearbox. So I'm gonna have to get a gearbox and a clutch as well, aren't I? I, th I think I'm just gonna persevere with this one. I think if I was you at home, I'd have cut my losses and run. The only good thing about having a YouTube is I can call it content now, even if I you know, can't afford to feed myself because my second car, which is a crappy old 137,000 mile diesel eco box, is breaking every five minutes. But the irony is, and the summary for this is what I'll say is, my, my reliable car is my blind eBay purchase Range Rover. Because let's be honest, it's never let me down really. The only fault it's had that wasn't my fault was a sticky rear caliper. Let's be honest, it's an old car. Any car could have that. This car's had all its brakes overhaul before I bought it. So yeah, in summary, if you want a nice, reliable runaround, buy an L322 Range Rover. Don't buy an A2, or at least buy a Smart. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, probably late for work now because all this traffic but I just wanted to film some sort of intro and outro for you sorry if it's a bit long-winded yeah more, more videos at the weekend I promise I'm gonna do some more fun stuff yeah thanks for all the comments and the likes and the subs and everything I do appreciate it it will help pay for um, maybe the clutch or something this month <laughs> on this uh, if my reindeer breaks now I'm really screwed <laughs> anyway <clears throat> have a good one guys and girls and non-binary folk. Love you all. Bye.